Okay, uh, thank you very much. We will call this meeting to order at one o'clock. Good afternoon, uh, council and staff. You know, these uh, proceedings are, of uh, this meeting will be recorded and made available on the internet. Can we have the roll call, please? Thank you, Mayor Clarkson, are you present? I am. Deputy Mayor Windover? Present. Councillor Armstrong? Present. Councillor Franzen? Present. And Councillor Lambstead has sent his regrets. For staff, we have Donna Taggart, CAO Treasurer. Present. Steve Brockbank, Director of Emergency Services. Present. Dylan Kosh, Director of Recreation and Facilities. Is on the line. Evan Grieger, Director of Public Works. Present. Uh, Barb Waldron, Director of Building and Planning, CBO. Present. Adele Arbor, Planner. Present. Ann Ruth, Deputy Clerk. Present. Uh, Matt Wesley, Building Inspector. Present. And Chelsea Carpenter, Waste Management Public Works Coordinator. Present. And Jesse Clark, Director of Corporate Services Clerk is present. Thank you. I'm going to do the land acknowledgement now. We respectfully acknowledge that Trent Lakes and Peterborough mm -hmm. County are located on the Treaty 20 Michisaugi Territory and in the traditional territory of Michisaugi and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nation, which include Alderville, Beausoleil, Curve Lake, Georgina Island, Hiawatha, Rama, and the Schoolwork Island First Nations. Trent Lakes respectively acknowledges that the Williams Treaty First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. We will now take a moment to reflect on these principles and our duties and the responsibility as members of council. Thank you. On behalf of council, I would like to take a moment to offer our condolences to Bob Taylor Vasey, Chair of the Parks, Recreation, Culture Advisory Committee on the death of his wife, Anne. I know Anne will be deeply missed by her family and friends and Bob and his family are certainly in our thoughts during this difficult time. I would also like to uh, keep our counselor, Terry Lambshead in our thoughts. Uh, he's in the emergency. Uh, checking him out to see if uh, if he has something serious going on or not. We certainly hope not, and uh, we hope to see him back here back here shortly because we miss his knobby knees. <laughs> now, if we could, I'm going to remind council members of their obligation to clear any pecuniary interests that they have at this time or at any time in the future. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda, please? Deputy Mayor Windover, Councilor Franzen, all in favor, motion is carried. We need to adopt the minutes of the special council meeting from January the 26th and the regular council meeting from February the 1st. Councilor Armstrong, Councilor Franzen, all in favor, the motion is carried. Business arising out of a previous meeting, council remuneration review and non-union market review final reports. Donna, would you like to speak to this, please? Yes, thank you, and through you. Uh, Council will recall that at the February 1st meeting, uh, Gallagher presented the results of the Council Remuneration and Staff uh, Market Review. At this time, I'm asking that Council defer a decision on the Council portion of that review. We will bring it back to the March 8th meeting. We did find a data error in that document, so that will be corrected but I am asking for council direction on the non-union market review, and it is staff's recommendation that council support the grid as suggested by Gallagher and Associates. Okay, uh, we need a motion and a seconder and discussion. Oh. Councillor Franzen? Yeah, I, I'd like to make the motion to uh, defer the council portion of it. 
and support uh, the grid system on the recommendations from Gallagher. Okay, do we have a seconder, Councillor Armstrong? Uh, discussion? All in favor? That motion is carried. Minutes and reports from committees and boards. Anne? Do you need to speak to this, Anne, or? Uh, through you, Mayor Clarkson, uh, at the January 27th Police Services Board meeting, the board passed a resolution requesting that council look into opportunities to promote the use of the municipality's black cat radar equipment. This report brings forward the Police Services Board resolution for council's consideration of the matter. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have a motion to uh, uh, accept that report, please? Deputy Mayor Wendover, Councillor Franzen. <laughs> I know his hands are there somewhere. <laughs> they are. Does anybody want to make a comment on this? If not, all in favor? All in favor? Oh, sorry. I did have a question. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Time's up. The Time's up. Time's up. slowly today. <laughs> um, it's like the gap I had in my, in my internet. Um, so what do we do with this? This is, this is they're asking that council um, look into opportunities to promote the use of the black hat is this something we should be deferring to staff to uh, follow up on i guess i wasn't at the meeting so i'm not quite sure what the intent was and what is your take on that like is this something that we that we look at the say the roads department is it the fire department that we get input from uh, is it uh, public complaints I would think a lot of it would be public complaint driven. Uh, through you, Mayor Clarkson, um, if council wished to support the board's request, they could direct staff to look into opportunities to promote the use of the black cat in consultation with the OPP. Um, we do have two members of staff identified as sort of uh, leads for the black cat. They work with the OPP on placement, um, but I believe the OPP budget falls within the um, building and planning department. So certainly if, if council were to direct staff to uh, look at opportunities, there would likely be a joint effort uh, to seek out opportunities to promote that uh, information sharing. So then maybe what we need to do is to refer this to staff to come back with some, with some ideas, because I think it was clear, uh, and Anne, you can, you can, uh, occur with this or not but I think it was clear from that meeting that we all felt that the black cat was not being uh, used to its uh, to its uh, the best advantage anyway we need a motion and I think yes yeah. yeah, sorry I guess I was no. going to say I I would hate to make this an urgent request because we know that building and planning are so far backlogged um, and I don't think this is an urgent matter I'm fine with deferring it to staff as long as it's you know, prioritized later than some of those more urgent things. Well, and I think if we could put a, say a spring date in this, because right now the getting up and down off poles and everything is not a, it's not a very good thing to do, but if we could get some locations pinpointed to the spring, it would be a, a, good, a good thing. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion and a seconder. Um, I believe. Perhaps I'll just clarify with uh, Deputy Mayor Windover that your motion was just to receive? To receive. Okay. Uh, was it not receive and direct staff to? To bring back comments. I think so, to bring yeah. back some. Okay. Yeah. You okay, Donna? Yes, yeah. thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. All right, uh, yes, Jesse. Sorry, through you again, Mayor Clarkson, just to confirm with Deputy Mayor Wendover. So you, your your motion was to receive this and then direct staff to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can do that, yes. Find, find suitable location, yeah. work, with, work with the public works. And... Uh, perhaps I could just get further, I'm still unclear what the motion is. To what well, motion is to receive and to get comments from the staff 
what their thoughts are and Okay. Okay. All in favor? Motion is carried. Ladies on reports. Uh, economic development, uh, parks and rec, police services board, or library board. Does anybody want to ask or enter any of these reports? If not, a motion to receive. Motion to Councillor Franson and Deputy Mayor Windover, all in favor? Motion is carried. Statutory public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act. We need a motion to suspend the regular meeting. Deputy Mayor Windover, Councillor Armstrong, all in favor? Motion has carried. Okay, Sarah, we will get you to introduce the first file, please. Hello, Sarah. Calling all Sarahs. I don't see Sarah on the line. Adele, are you prepared to present this report? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, Sarah is on the line, but apparently um, she's not being let into the meeting. Well, that's not nice. Are you able to hear me now, Council Members? Jesse, is that you or Anne that let her in? Yeah, that was Sarah there. Sarah, are you here now? Yeah, can you hear me? Thank you. So that's the zoning bylaw uh, for file number 21-11 and the official plan mm -hmm. amendment file number 55. Thank you through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is a public meeting for file number 21-11 to consider an official plan amendment and a zoning bylaw amendment submitted by Kent Randall of EcoRoo Consulting on behalf of the property owner, Esther Inglis and Alan Hitchin for the property located at 65 Fire Route 21. The subject lands have a shoreline frontage of approximately 100 meters or 328 feet and a lot area of approximately 1.62 hectares or four acres. The subject lands are currently occupied by the gallery on the Lake Art Gallery and an accessory dwelling unit for the gallery owner. The applicant wishes to apply for a consent to create a new lot separating the gallery from the accessory dwelling and allowing the existing gallery building to be utilized for residential purposes. The severed lot would have a lot area of 0 0.33 hectares and a shoreline frontage of 36 meters, whereas the retained lot would have a lot area of 1.2 hectares and a shoreline frontage of 58 meters a planning justification report and a scoped natural heritage evaluation, which was peer reviewed, by Stan, peer reviewed by Stantec, was submitted in support of the application. There is a letter from Peterborough Public Health that does not support the official plan amendment or the zoning bylaw amendment. There is a public comment that does not support the severance proposal due to the proposed property access. There is a planning report on the agenda from the municipality's planning consultant, Chris Jones. His report states that the application is generally consistent with the provincial policy statement and local planning policy. However, he notes that the severance would create several areas of non-compliance if the consent were approved, including a deficient lot frontage, an interior side, side yard for the severed lot, and a deficient water yard for the retained lot. Further, if any members of the public did not register with the clerk indicating their intent to make an oral submission but would like to do so at this time, please use the raise hand feature so we are able to promote you in order for you to make an oral submission. Thank you. Uh, yes, Jesse. Thank you. I do have Kent Randall, the applicant, on the line. Oh, hello. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Hello, everyone. It's uh, it's Kent Randall, Principal Planner at EcoView Consulting. Uh, we're the agents for the applicant uh, for uh, this proposal. Um, Sarah provided a pretty good summary as to what we're trying to do here. Uh, everybody's familiar, I'm sure, with with this property gallery on the lake. Um, as everybody knows, the uh, the gallery has recently closed, um, and the the current owner is moving on. 
Um, and so this is a plan to essentially redesignate, rezone the property from the commercial use or from a commercial designation and zone to residential designation and zone, um, and which is consistent, of course, with the surrounding uh, the surrounding properties, which are, are primarily shoreline residential development. Um, so th this is in keeping with that. We're not proposing any you know further development of the site. Uh, what we're doing here is essentially drawing a line uh, between the, the existing gallery building and the accessory dwelling unit that, that's on the property. Um, uh, Sarah had mentioned uh, comments from Peterborough Public Health. Uh, we are aware of those comments. They, they, their issues are with the existing septic systems and how we're intending to, I guess a, a, a one of them is, is undersized and how we're intending to, uh, to uh, reconcile that or, or address that um, through this application process. Uh, we only received those comments. We did receive comments from them a few months ago, but we had provided further information to them. They only just provided us with further comments last week, so we do need to address those. We're happy to address those, and we do feel that we can address those comments uh, and, and where, whereby we can get sign off from, from PPH. So uh, yeah, that, that, that is essentially what's, what's proposed. Um, uh, I, I know that Sarah mentioned the deficiencies that, in terms of the zoning. However, we are, as, as council is aware, we are rezoning the property. Our intention is to have a site-specific zone applicable to both these properties that would, um, uh, that would recognize those deficiencies. And, and those deficiencies, of course, do not, uh, preclude this uh, this particular um, severance from occurring. So uh, th this is the o OPA and ZBA portion. Our intention is that once these uh, amendments are approved, if they are approved, uh, we would move forward with the consent application for uh, consent for severance. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, the council or, or the public may have. Thank you. Okay, council, do I hear hmm. comments? I have, I have a couple of comments. Uh, I worked with Esther quite a bit when she was trying to figure out how she was going to uh, get out from underneath the, uh, the gallery. And this particular area was one of, the, one of the items that she had. And it always came up, uh, the problem being septic and parking. Uh, I haven't heard anything at all about parking. And we do know that that whole thing is on rock. So I would imagine that that's probably part of the uh, concerns that the health unit has uh, is with the rock. If you have ever been in the basement of the gallery in the lake, it's just one great big sheet of rock coming down out of the side of it, uh, eventually forming a floor. So my suggestion would be that until we hear from the health unit uh, looking at the, the septic and also the parking, that we would defer this. Any support for that? I would agree with that, Madam Mayor. I, I think the concerns that have been raised by PPH are, are considerable, and uh, the agent has suggested they, they believe that they can resolve them. So I think we need to give them time to, uh, to address them and resolve those. Okay. Uh, we don't need a motion for this, do we, Jesse? This is just. To you, Mayor Cox, and not at this time. The business arising from the statutory meeting would be the time to. Okay. Anybody else want to comment on this? Okay. Uh, now we need a motion to reconvene the regular meeting, and that would be Councillor Armstrong and Deputy Mayor Window. All in favor? Motion is carried. Now, business arising from the statutory public meeting. This is where we would ask for the motion for this, right? Correct. So, can we have a motion here to defer this? Deputy Mayor Windover and Councillor Armstrong, all in favor? That motion is carried. Now we've got a presentation from Chris Kamenlach, Community Development Program Manager, and Christine Nash, a rising collective regarding Community Safety Wellbeing Plan update. If you would please unmute your audio and share your camera and make your presentation. You will have 20 minutes. And we'll ask the council to save your questions till the end, please.
Thank you, Mayor Clarkson and members of council. Appreciate uh, being here uh, and having us here today to, to give an update and to talk about the community safety and well-being plan. Um, I'm joined today uh, by Christy Nash. She is with a local consulting firm, Arising Collective, who's with us to assist with developing this local plan. Um, I will make note, unfortunately, at the beginning that this first slide is uh, now, unfortunately, uh, incorrect. Three of the local townships, being Asphodel, Norwood, Cabin, Monaghan, and Autonomy South Monaghan, have withdrawn from the collaborative effort to, to create this city-county plan or decided to uh, group together and, and develop um, a plan of their own. So that just recently happened, um, and I'd be happy to provide a little bit more clarification at the end if council wished. Um, next slide, please. So the, the purpose of, of our presentation today and our delegation is to give an overview of the community and safety and well-being, the purpose and the evolving process, an overview of the engagement plan, a review of what we've heard to date, opportunities for engaging locally, and uh, request for support and participation. Um, as, you, as you may know that developing these plans is provincially mandated um, under the Police Services Act, and we're working through those guidelines uh, to meet those requirements. Um, I think it's also important to note that uh, we are working to have uh, a plan in front of this council before the municipal election for your consideration and adoption. Next slide, please. So the purpose of, of our plan is for Peterborough to be a place where everyone is safe, included, and part of a, a community, you know, a high-level purpose overall. The desired change that we're looking for is for, uh, for, for us to be working together in new ways to address safety and well-being issues through programs and services that are available in Peter, uh, to all Peterborough residents. So it's really those new ways, and we're already doing a lot of collaboration and a lot of things, but um, we're trying to look at different ways of, of doing that to, to advance our priorities. Um, next slide, please. Part of uh, the, the setup and the, uh, of this project is an advisory committee, and it's a cross-sectoral advisory committee of various sectors and all the municipalities that are involved. We're, we're very thrilled that your municipality is on this advisory committee. Um, next slide, please. The values and guiding principles that we're following as we develop this plan is that we want to align with other plans without duplicating initiatives and actions and research that have already been done. We want to build on that work, strive for equity, uh, participation of those with lived experience. We want to act collaboratively across sectors, um, look at evidence-informed decision-making when we come up with our plan and the actions and strategies that we include um, and develop ongoing evaluation methods so we know how we're doing and gauging where we're succeeding or falling short. Next slide, please. The process uh, has led us to the identif identification of these uh, risk factors uh, being around mental health, poverty and income, food security all grouped together there, housing and homelessness, transportation, mobility, addictions and substance use, employment and education. So we're working down from that high level and filtering it to how our communities need to address these issues better. Um, you've, we've included a, a number of documents and background work that have uh, taken place to date. Christy will, will touch on those during her part of the presentation. Um, this slide shows that we're in that, as I mentioned, the, the identify strategies kind of stage and what we're working towards. Um, and we're, we're working on sort of different stages all at once, uh, which also Christy will clarify. Uh, next slide, please. So it is that, that community, community engagement phase and this council delegation and the others that we are doing, we were at North Kawartha earlier this morning, uh, providing this uh, a delegation in the same light to give council an update, but also to hear back from council 
um, and to explain how we are engaging uh, locally and across the community. Um, and as I mentioned, we will be uh, having that uh, planned in front of council, this council, before the municipal election, and then working towards that implementation plan um, after that. Next slide, please. At this point, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Christy to, to give an update on, on what we've heard and, and where we're at right now. Thank you so much for the introduction, Chris, and thank you, Mayor Clarkson and members of council for um, having us today at this meeting. Um, my name is uh, Christy Nash and I'm co-founder of Arising Collective. We are a consulting practice based in uh, Peterborough and Halliburton counties. Next slide, please. Thank you. So as part of your package, we have included uh, the community safety and well-being engagement plan. The purpose of engagement activities is to both educate about the plan itself and also to gather meaningful insight from a variety of stakeholders who have interest in the plan and or are impacted by the plan. So we have used a, um, the spectrum of public participation as a guide to develop a scaffolding approach to engagement to seek input from different stakeholder groups at various stages of the project, depending on their levels of knowledge, awareness, interest and impact of the information we are asking them to provide. You will note that we have identified six different phases of engagement and given our timeline, we are currently engaged uh, in phases three, four and five simultaneously and intend to complete these phases of engagement by the end of March, 2022. At which point we will move from gathering insights into identifying outcomes and strategies to be included in the plan in April of 2022. You will note that phase three is dedicated to public consultation. And as part of this phase, we are developing an online survey which will be hosted on Peterborough Connect. And we are aiming to have this ready to launch by the end of February or early March. And we would love to have your support in promoting the survey throughout the township and within your networks. Additionally, nearing the end of March, we are hoping to host two town hall meetings to gather insights from the general public. These will likely take place online to be safe. However, we are actively working with the townships to coordinate the timing logistics. Similar to the survey, we would appreciate your support in promoting these events to ensure active and fulsome participation. Next slide, please. Thank you. As part of this presentation, we wanted to share with you some of the high level findings of our phase two engagement with service providers. As part of your package, we included the results of eight focus groups that we conducted with service providers in November, 2021 and February, 2022. We connected with a total of 73 service providers across sectors to hear insights and experiences, opportunities and challenges related to the six identified risk and priority areas that Chris spoke to. Next slide, please. Thank you. You will see in the 45 page report that we gathered a significant amount of information that relate to all four areas of the community safety and well-being framework, including social development, prevention, risk intervention and incident response. There was a strong agreement that collaborative approaches are required to address the complex issues our, community fa our communities face, most no notably in the areas of housing and homelessness, mental health, addictions and substance use, and poverty and income. Next slide, please. Thanks. Well, there was alignment on many of the issues and opportunities our community faces, Common themes that arose across all risk and priority areas include the importance of community awareness and engagement on issues such as harm reduction and stigma, the importance of defining common agendas and improving collaboration both across sectors and interorganizationally as well as intergovernmentally, the need for identifying common indicators to measure progress, collect data, and share knowledge, Advocacy for increased and sustainable funding across all levels of government and funding bodies. The opportunity to create and deliver inclusive programs and services and enhanced and new coordinated approaches for rural communities. Next slide, please. Thank you. Well, there is a great deal of alignment of priorities across the city and county. A number of county specific opportunities and challenges were identified. Some of the challenges that were identified include lack of access to 
service in rural areas. Barriers to accessing services include uh, transportation and internet access, and lack of affordable housing and the ability to monitor homelessness. Some of the opportunities that I, were identified include um, increased mobile units, community hubs, new transportation services, and new housing options. Next slide, please. We feel it is very important to highlight the unique circumstances of each township. And we have included on this slide an example of how Windsor highlighted townships in its community safety and well-being plan. Our intention is to include in the plan a one to two page overview of each township that highlights the demographic data and unique, out unique outcomes or objectives that have been highlighted as priorities through these delegations, the public survey, the town halls, and the um, focus groups with service providers, as I noted earlier. Next slide, please. So at this time, we would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, Council, I know you're just jumping there. What would you like to, uh, what would you like to ask? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, and through you, Madam Mayor. Um, it may be premature, but I'm just wondering if you have any specific schedule and or plans for engagement of uh, our Trent Lakes residents in your consultation process. Thank you, through, through you, Mayor Clarkson. The, uh, we're working to develop, uh, have it scheduled in March, a first public meeting. It would be a combined meeting with Trent Lakes and North Kawartha public meeting. We're also uh, scheduling uh, um, a consultation with the police services boards. I know there's restructuring going on, but inviting the existing members uh, to a, a consultation and focus group uh, uh, for their perspective, given this is out of the Police Services Act. So that's intended to happen um, in both in March, uh, and we'll be looking to the municipality for assistance, as Christy said, to help promote, engage, and contribute to, to those consultations. There will also be an uh, online uh, public survey. Um, you may be familiar with the Connect Peterborough platform that the city uses uh, for uh, engagement and surveys of this kind. Uh, we're also reaching out to the libraries uh, to have paper copies available um, there and at municipal offices as well for folks who, who may not be comfortable with doing online surveys or don't have access to that, uh, that, that mode of communication. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Chris, uh, I have a couple of questions, uh, mainly around uh, the initiative that Dr. Prigat is uh, working with with the uh, crisis inter intervention. Are you um, related in that in that um, it push at all? Because the the downtown area has a somewhat of an organization against that. They think that it's going to bring more. Um, problems to the downtown area. Uh, listening to Dr. Piggott, it should actually resolve some of those. What is your feeling? Um, thank you for the question. Council who doesn't, uh, maybe doesn't understand this, the, uh, they're trying to open up a safe injection site uh, right downtown. I think it's in the old um, bus station, I believe. And people will go there, bring their own material, uh, spend a certain amount of time after they've uh, ingested their uh, dope, and then they they move on. But it's to stop the uh, uh, the overdose. Like right now, I think we have three times the overdoses in this area uh, from uh, from drug abuse than we have from COVID. Sorry, Chris. Go ahead. Okay. Thank Thank you, uh, Mayor Clarkson, for the question. Yes, it's a a, a very critical issue for our community and it has been for a while and it's certainly becoming more relevant um, as more people um, die from drug overdoses in our community. Um, there is a report going to council in, uh, in March. Um, Dr. Piggott is also, I believe, presenting at that March city council meeting um, concerning a funding request and assistance with the uh, consumption and treatment center at the old Greyhound bus terminal. Um, 
city council um, earmarked half of the police services board budget surplus towards a project or some initiatives to help address the 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 resolution from council was around housing homelessness and addictions issues so um we are going to be receiving information for council to consider from the peterborough drug strategy in connection uh, with with a proposal that they have right now it's still in the report phase so i don't want to get into too much detail but it's based on their priorities um, as the drug strategy and the pillars that they're working through in their in their um, programming but as this relates to the uh, community safety and well-being plan it is something that uh, is emerging as a priority not only as an urban issue but a rural issue as well so the input from the drug strategy and other agencies that um, such as PARN, public health uh, working with the police and the drug strategy and forecast um, uh, will be having, there's obviously, since we identified it as a key priority, aspects of addressing the opioid and drug and addictions issues in this in our plan. I will add that Christy Nash and, and her uh, group did assist the drug strategy in developing their strategy, so I'm, I'm not sure, Christy, if you wanted to add anything to that given your background. Thanks, Chris. Um, we actually didn't uh, participate in helping them with this specific strategy, but we did um, support the community consultations um, uh, associated with the safe consumption site. And I think um, uh, there is a full report that is available on what was heard from uh, neighbors and uh, downtown businesses were also invited to attend. Um, and it has been submitted, as I understand it, to the federal government where it received approval and is now uh, with the province as well, but it is available on the website. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, can we have a motion to receive? Deputy Mayor Windower and Councillor Franzen, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you, Council. Appreciate it. Now we have a delegation from Tom Henderson for our grandchildren regarding working together for climate solutions. Please unmute your audio and share your camera and make a presentation. You will have 10 minutes. Hi. Um, thank you, Councillors and uh, Mayor Clarkson. Um, I, I'm just opening, I'm trying to open my camera here. Um, I don't know if it's going to open or not, actually. Um, uh, this is the first, yeah. okay, here we go. On our screen. Sorry? We have it on our screen. Oh, you do? Okay. Um, that was a very interesting presentation. I got a little bit sidetracked thinking about it. I worked in addictions for 30 years. I, I affectionately refer to the area that I worked in as the corner of chaos and mayhem. So, uh, uh, and I, uh, you know, it's just a very interesting project. So I'm hoping I can um, uh, find Christy and Chris and have a conversation with them about their efforts. Um, so I, I vacationed in, in this area for, for, for 20 years on Pigeon Lake and uh, moved up here a couple of years ago. So I'm not exactly new to this area either, but I just wanted to talk to you today about um, the the group that I'm working with for um, RG and um, and uh, our what we're what we're interested in at this time. Can I see the next slide, please. Uh, so we're just a local climate uh, action group where we um, we have some asks of the of the municipality. We're doing presentations to a number of municipalities, but basically we're we're you know we kind of think of ourselves as here to help. We want to figure out what we can do. What 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 do you need help with? How can we how can we contribute to to your 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 climate action plans? And we like to think that we can inform and we can inspire and motivate uh, people to participate. Um, can I see the next slide, please? So I just wanted to mention that I I was in in the UK. I was fortunate to go to the UK and went to the London Science Museum and saw a. Uh, an exhibit called Amazonia by Sebastiano Salgado. Him and his team were in the Amazon for seven years. Uh, can I see the next slide, please? Uh, 
and um, and they he did a phenomenal uh, series of images, and this is what's called a flying river. And so the Amazon's the only place in the world where um, aerial humidity does not depend on evaporation from an ocean. It happens from the trees giving off moisture into the into the atmosphere, which creates a a, a, a river, um, a flying river that then dumps the water and the trees take up the moisture and it goes back in. So it's a circular kind of process. We saw what a flying river can do in, uh, in British Columbia when, uh, when they got that, that, the rains that they got in British Columbia. That, that was a flying river that came across the Pacific with the heat, with the water heating up so much more water evaporates. And I just I just bring that up because with the deforestation in the Amazon, and it's ten times the size of France, and uh, with the with the deforestation, they're concerned that these flying rivers won't happen anymore, that there'll be that the, the, the entire area it's at a tipping point and it could dry out, and what that would mean it would become a carbon emitter as opposed to a carbon sink, and and it's really at that particular tipping point right now, so. Next slide, please. So this, um, you know, so this is an image from the Amazon, and I was just surprised to see that that's what it actually looks like. It's such an amazing territory. But this, you know, when you see, when I saw something like this, it just reminds me of just how complex and complicated it seems, and oftentimes it seems like there's nothing anybody can do about it because it's just too big. Well, I like to take really big projects and break them down into possible parts. There are possible parts and things that we can do today. Uh, next slide, please. You know, so the students, you know, we there were some student voices and and uh, they were able to, you know, they they wanted to let you hear what they are thinking about climate and it's uh it's affecting them and and for our grandchildren, we're really concerned about this. Uh, the the children more, you know, young people more so even, like they know that they're going to have to live in what we do. And uh, and what we don't do, and and they have uh, serious concerns about it, and I know that it it weighs heavily on on many of these young people. Next, next slide. Uh, I we could listen to one of the videos here if the if there's time available. Um, next slide. Um, I think you'll be able. Yeah, if you click on that, you'll hear what. Uh, well, we'll go. We'll we'll do that at towards the end. So obviously, there's. Um, there's a, a concern in the public and you know from recent uh, studies by uh, abacus data in 2021 showed that 75 percent of people are either uh, extremely or very concerned about about climate uh, next slide you can skip that one little joke i guess um, but here but but we know that every municipality had to come up in 2016 uh, had to um, had to develop a, a, cl a climate um, climate strategy, and uh, there's milestones, right? So what we were interested in hearing about was uh, where you are with these milestones, uh, recognizing that you know the pandemic has the pandemic has slowed a lot of things down and you know limited what people could do. Uh, I didn't actually see anything around. Um, I know that the, I know that you have a number of activities going around uh, around the action plan at milestone four, and that you may even be monitoring some of this. But I I haven't been able to collect that information and don't really have anything that I can refer to. So I would really appreciate it if we could at some point in time somebody could direct me to who could give me some of that information so we can we can share it. I realize that some, some municipalities have a full-time climate uh, person and, and you don't. And I know that it's just a lot, a lot, a lot of extra work. And, and so like, we're here to see what it is that we can do to help. Is there anything that we can do to help? Uh, so next slide, please. And that's just some data on, um, on where things are with that, uh, with, uh, CO2 in the atmosphere. Next, next slide, and you can look at that later. Um, so we build a, a, we have a lot of relationships and network with a lot of specialists in different fields, and we would, you know, we want to know how we can help meeting these two milestones, uh, both both four and five. Next, next slide, please. 
uh, we have uh, we we have regular presentations by different people. What you know, one was on four uh, home retrofits, um, heat pumps, and that kind of thing. One was on electrical vehicles, and just recently we had one on regenerative farming and climate change. I think that regenerative farming kind of ties in with phosphorus levels in the lakes and and weed growth and fish kills and those kinds of things. And I know there's people that participate in that. It's not my area of expertise, but just an area of interest. Next slide, please. And that was the that was some information on the um, on the regenerative agriculture. Uh, next slide, please. And that's just about the you know the emissions and home emissions and another area where council may be able to affect some significant positive change by promoting home energy audits or encouraging the switch from fossil fuels to heat pumps, which by the way pay for themselves within five years, and uh, promoting government incentives to help home refits. Uh, so that's that that is an area where there can be some work done. Next slide. So we have, uh, for our grandchildren, has a resource sheet with, link, with links to related programs and other climate-related initiatives that we can forward to council to assist with community climate and uh, uh, education. I know this is, the education piece of this is really big. Uh, next next slide, please. So this is the, uh, this is about the climate uh, caucus. And this is one of our asks is that would it be possible for some to to for council to select a representative to join Canada's climate caucus? The climate change action plan encourages municipalities to network with other municipalities to achieve their emission reduction targets. Um, and the, uh, the climate caucus coordinates approximately 400 municipal representatives working together to share best practices for meeting the 2030 uh, climate uh, emissions goals. The meeting's about one or two hours each month, so it's it's not a huge commitment. Uh, and I know that you get many, many uh, things like this that add up. So even though they're small commitments, they do add up. Next slide, please. And there's that uh, Federation of Canadian Municipalities has a leadership course, and I know that course is only seven hours. They don't have, they currently don't have uh, uh, there was only 20 slots in the last one, but I think they're going to run another one again. And I think it would be a really great kind of area for for a look at knowledge transfer and to see what you know best practices and see what other people are doing. Um, so so that's a, another thing with, that hopefully you could think about. I just think it would be really interesting to hear what other municipalities are doing and how they're approaching leadership in this area. Next slide, please. So that that was probably yeah that's uh, one of the student students uh, next slide and I don't know if you can uh, okay well we skipped the student thing so hopefully you'll go back and you you can listen to that and they're great voices maybe go go back could you go back the slide to and click on the link to hear what the yes Jesse. Uh, through you, Mayor Clarkson, Tom, I, I had sent you an email, but we did do some testing in advance of the meeting, and unfortunately, the sound quality um, was not very good for those videos. So oh, the links okay, are okay, still active okay. on the agenda for anyone to go back and listen to those. Okay, I apologize for that. So um, anyway, um, you know, the, the, these young people are, you know, are, are very active in this, and, uh, you know, it's just interesting to hear what they have to say. So here's a little project of mine that I kind of last year I shrink wrapped my boat for the first time and I asked the guy what you know when I took it off where does it go and he says it goes in landfill you know it goes in the garbage and I was like well, well like what do you mean it goes in the garbage he says no it just goes in the garbage I said you know this is a really high quality um, uh, imminently recyclable product. It's not like, I mean, it, it, these, this can be recycled along with agricultural shrink wrap. So I did some investigation and what I found out um, was that Peterborough County sends out letters to, to marinas or little bl blurbs to marinas saying that it can be recycled, but it's all voluntary. Uh, so a guy can take his boat or a person can take their boat 
to their place, they take it off and then rather than put it in a bag and take it back to the marina for recycling, they just throw it in the garbage. Um, now, I don't know about you, but I, there's a lot of boats that get recycled in this area. Like this is this is boating country. This is like, there's a mountain of this stuff. And that, that not to even mention, and Switch Energy, which is the, the, low, the company in uh, Clinton, Ontario, on the other side of Stratford, he does mostly agricultural film on the other side of uh, the, the, the uh, 400. But on this side of the 400, all the way down to Eastern Ontario, Gananoque, Belleville, it's blue shrink wrap. I mean, there, there are some farms uh, for sure, but there's a lot of this material. So the question is, how can we get this, you know, divert this stuff from the, from the, from the landfills? A switch energy will come and pick it up. It's a little bit of a process. I included a, a little blurb that says, you know, here's how you do it. You cut the string off the bottom. You have to remove all the white strapping and the vents and it just gets folded up and put it into a bag. The bags cost $5. So, you know, it cost me over $400 to shrink rack my boat last year. If I can recycle it for five bucks, I prefer to do that. And I think most people I know would do the same uh, and take it back to the marina that did it. So, Tom, so anyway. I, I just asked you to wrap up. You've sure. used your, you're past your 10, just if a couple of more things is fine, but just be prepared to wrap it up, please. Okay, no, I'm, uh, I just wanted to know if there was anybody on council that, you know, that would kind of, uh, could council send out this information about this, about this program and uh, encourage marinas and boat owners to, to participate, because I just think it's a really doable thing. I think you could put it on your action plan, it could be a win and an easy win. Um, and, and we could, I asked Don not at, uh, at uh, Switch Energy if he could kind of quantify how much material he takes away because in that case you could you could put you could say well this much material got diverted from uh, landfill and I think that would be a really really easy thing to do and uh, everybody could feel good about it so that's I'm just hoping that I'm talking to the marinas myself and other municipalities and I'm hoping we can we can get Switch Energy busy just one last thing there, this material is going into different products and there is a process that's being developed where it will be converted back into oil so it can be used so that there's no more need to bring other oil out of the earth. So, uh, it, it, you know, and this is coming. So I think it would be a, a good place to start. Thank you I, for your time. Tom, I think if you would uh, send us your contact information, we can maybe be, uh, put this through to economic development. And then it can be uh, put through on our website to the marinas because I know there's one marina that's in the uh, process of um, doing a development. And one of the items that he was talking about was by putting a cover up, he, it will save him from all of this. I, I think if he knew about this, he probably would be looking at this. So yeah. uh, probably a well-kept secret. And uh, <laughs> it seems it, to our attention. Yeah, no, it seems to me. And I think the, uh, the county um, doesn't really sees it as a business to business thing. So they're not really driving it uh, necessarily. I think that, but I think it's something you can take on and it's a big, I think it's a, you know, it only happens over a month or two every year, uh, but it, it could be a big win in, a, 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 in terms of, you know, landfill and, and, and recycling. I think it can really contribute to your goals. Um, I will send you my information. Sorry. Thanks. Excuse me, Donna? Yes, thank you and through you. I believe Chelsea would like to add a comment to this. She's sure. able to provide some information. Yeah. Please. Chelsea's going to comment and she's the person who looks after our waste. So yes. she, she'd be the best person to uh, make use of this information. Well, I, yeah, I just, I, I talked to Chelsea this morning, but I'm happy to hear what she has to say. Sure. Go ahead, Chelsea. Thank you, Mayor Clarkson, and through you. Um, and yes, thanks, Tom. We did have a, a good discussion this morning regarding the bail wrap and the, the shrink wrap. So I was just going to explain to Council what is currently in place that's um, facilitated through the county. So um, annually, the county, in coordination with Switch, Ener Switch Energy, will send out a letter to local marinas as well as farm associations to let them know about this recycling opportunity. Um, as Tom mentioned, it is 
um, optional. It isn't mandatory, but it is basically acting as a resource to let marinas and local farmers know that there is an opportunity to recycle their bale wrap or shrink wrap. Um, the reason that this hasn't been promoted on an individual basis with the different townships is to not overwhelm the program. So as I mentioned, the letter is done in conjunction with Switch Energy. Um, and that way, Switch Energy has an idea of how many people are being notified of this recycling opportunity in order to properly manage it so that they don't get overwhelmed with incoming quantities. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of uh, companies out there for this recycling initiative, so it all simply falls onto Switch Energy. Um, so that's why it is administered carefully to ensure that it doesn't get overwhelmed. Um can I can I just make a comment? I talked to Don Knott this morning at Switch Energy, and he just he has uh, unlimited capacity to deal with 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 this. There's no limitations on it at all. He has uh, he has uh, recycling uh, recyclers that will take it. He has a number of people that will take the uh, recycled product, and and they're investigating new products. There's no shortage of he he's the only one doing it now, and I suspect that there's a increase in the price of carbon that there'll be a lot more people looking for this material since he's the only one now i just think it's really you know he'll just he'll take whatever he can get so there's no there's no issue with that i spoke to him this morning and and uh, i'm sure that he would he'll he'll confirm that so that's not an issue okay i think we'll just uh leave it up to uh chelsea mm -hmm. to figure out how best to uh, promote this Okay. Your questions from council? Okay, can we have a motion to uh, uh, receive this delegation? Yes. Can I just want a quick comment. Thank you. Do you, Madam Mayor? I just wanted to, to, to say, Tom, that there is work being done within this municipality on energy reduction and emissions as well as reduction of waste. And the uh, waste reports come through every quarter. The reports on our emissions and what we're doing to conserve energy come to council once a year. Um, mm. So we could forward or make a, a note to forward that information to you, but there are action plans. We do get reports on it and there is progress. No, that's great to hear. I, I mean, we I, can always do more and I'm, I applaud your efforts and those of your group, um, but you had asked about that. I just wanted to assure you that those are in place. Well, that, that's great to hear, and I would appreciate, you know, if we could get that information. That's that's really helpful because we want to we want to also promote municipalities that are that are doing what they can and see what else we can do. So, yeah, I think we're in this together. We better be. We we need to be. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I think did we get a motion? I'll make a motion to receive. Okay. And seconder would be Deputy Mayor Wendover. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Staff Thank reports, you. Chelsea. Oh. We're going to we're going to find out about the waste now. Thank you, Mayor Clarkson, and through you. So this report was brought forward um, initially because the matter was brought forward to the budget as a budget request to the Recreation and Facilities Department from the Lakehurst Hall to pay for their garbage disposal. Um, oh. From there, it prompted Council's resolution that staff investigate providing waste cards for community halls and report back to Council. So this was reporting back to Council. Um, however, it has been identified um, through our interim tax bill process that the Cavendish Hall has received a waste card in the past. So staff's recommendation in light of this information is to refer this matter back to staff to look at um, waste cards distributed to all municipal buildings and not just specified for the community halls. Uh, do we have a Should comment? Should be. The only comment that I would have, Chelsea, and I know I don't have to I don't have to mention this to you, but in order for them to use these, they should really seriously recycle. Because I know when the halls have functions, more often than not, everything goes into these containers. So if they're going to make use of these uh, passes, they should also be very rigid about the way they uh, process their uh, their waste. 
thank you. And through you, Mayor Clarkson, um, that would be the expectation that should council decide to issue waste cards to community halls and other municipally owned um, buildings that they would have to follow the current waste bylaw and ensure that they're conforming with all recycling, recycling and sorting requirements. Okay, so can we have a motion to uh, approve that? Yeah. Deputy Mayor yeah, Windover? Yeah. Second the motion. I think the motion now is to receive the report and to yeah. defer uh, any further yeah. decision on this until further staff work is completed. Do we need to defer it? Yeah. yeah. They want to expand it basically beyond community halls to other municipally owned buildings, so libraries and health centers, et cetera, et cetera. And that work hasn't been done yet. They only did it on community halls. Is that correct, Chelsea? <laughs> Say to you, Councillor Armstrong, through you, Mayor Clarkston. Yes, that is correct. So this report is only um, speaking to the, the community halls as originally directed by Council. Um, however, given um, the new items that have been identified, staff feel it's appropriate to bring back to Council some options with looking after um, waste at all the municipally owned facilities and whether Council deems it appropriate to issue a waste card to all municipally owned um properties or just certain ones and how they want to deal with that. So more information would be brought forward to include all of the municipally owned buildings and um, essentially the same options would more than likely be presented, but we feel it's appropriate to look at all of the, all of the buildings and not just the halls. So then as you're saying, what we do today then is just receive this report. Receive this report and defer further consideration until staff. Do you want to make that motion? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, no. I guess I'm yeah. clarifying. Yeah. Deputy Mayor Window's sure. motion. You're okay with that? Yeah. So then you are the motioner. You made the motion. You are the seconder. Well, she, yeah, she okay. Did. All in favor? So is Deputy Mayor Windover and Councillor Armstrong. Recreation facilities. We don't have any. Fire emergency service, not at this time. Building and planning. Matthew Wesley, building inspector. Options for animal control. Thank you, Mayor Clarkson and members of council. Uh, so before you is a report uh, that's a follow-up to my last presentation to council. Uh, the report recommends that council direct staff to negotiate an agreement with the Peterborough Humane Society to provide bylaw and animal control services to the municipality and staff are asking for direction. Okay, so do we have, um, let's have some discussion here and then get a motion. I'm, I'm gathering, Matthew, that what you're looking for is a motion to be able to do this negotiation, right? Correct. So can we get a motion and then discussion, please? Uh, Councillor Franson and a seconder. Just clarifying what the motion right. is, if I may. I think it's for Matthew uh, Wesley, building inspector, to develop options for animal control. Is that correct? How about? And then we'll have a second motion about the donation request. Yeah. Okay. Then I would second mm -hmm. uh, uh, directing staff to negotiate a new agreement with Peterborough Humane Society. All in favor? Motion has carried. Just with this report, that's an awful pile of money to have. No, I mean, like, you know, for them, the chairs to, for, to get something adopted, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yes. gee. Okay, so we're done with that now, are we? Yes. I think there's the donation part of this motion that uh, Matt tabled. Um, and I think. Matthew, you indicated that there was $17,000 available, and I was going to make the motion that we propose a donation to uh, the animal, uh, lost the word, Animal Control Society for $10,000, but leave the remaining $7,000 in reserve in the event that the number of incidents this year is greater than what we've seen in the past, and that would allow for us to uh, support any additional unplanned or unbudgeted expense. I'll yes. Second that motion. You would second that motion? Yeah. Okay. Have we any discussion? How many um how many townships opted out of the donation? Do we know? 
So Mr. thank you, Mr. Gordon, Mr. Darrell Dunlap. That's me. Pardon? Go ahead. I think I, wasn't it North Gorth and Darrell Dunlap? So opted it's out? my understanding all opted out except for oh. Selwyn. Oh. Yeah. Like, has everybody taken a really good look at what it is they're building? Oh. They're building a, a very, very, very fancy, could be a holiday inn. I'm not sure most dogs care for that. Well, my main concern is the fact that they're looking after, holy gee, part of Ontario. Everyone's going to better just take whatever they wanted there. Like Oshawa, Whitby, you name it, or anyone can take whatever they want into that facility. That remember that's at Brownsville County Council. Yeah. I mean, just what they expect us to pay for it. Well, I think it's interesting that everybody, with the exception of Selwyn, and I had forgotten that mm -hmm. had opted out of that. Um, I think what we probably should do is have a recorded vote. May I make one more comment? With me? Sure. Yeah. Um, thank you, to be Madam Mayor. Um, I agree. <laughs> there are plans for a new building and a center are mm. quite ambitious. My sense is that they will have to tailor that back based on the funding that they in fact get. So I think it will work itself out. Um, the other comment is we do have a lot of animal owners in this municipality. And I think we do rely on uh, this organization for many things and would want to support them if we could, because we don't do that internally. It's not a municipal service. So that would be my rationale for uh, suggesting that we do provide some funding. I think they asked for $50,000. So that would be my rationale for suggesting we provide some support. Okay, um, any other discussion? Yes. I just want to say, uh, I do concur with Councillor Armstrong. That's initially what I suggested, that we donate $10,000 to mm -hmm. the, the, for the dog center. And I think they're doing, probably doing some innovative work there as well, so. Okay, uh, can we have a, uh, <laughs> a recorded vote? We're ready for the vote? Yep. Yes, please. Mayor Clarkson, are you in favor? No. Councillor Franzen? Yes. Deputy Mayor Windover? No. Councillor Armstrong? Yes. That has failed. Pardon? That motion has failed. Okay. Now, um, that doesn't mean that further along the way, if they bring their horns in a little bit, we can't look at it. Uh, mm -hmm. Sarah, junior planner, consent application, please, for uh, new lots. Thank you, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we're requesting today's MAF be deferred by request to the external planning consultant, Chris Jones, to allow staff to further review the possible requirement of an official plan amendment for the subject property. Are you are you finished there, Sarah? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay. Um, can we have comment, please? Anybody? Can we have a motion then? Well, do I have to do everything? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, Sarah, what is your recommendation? Uh, that it be deferred to a later date so as to give staff um, time to review the official plan policies. Perfect. Okay. Can we have mm -hmm. a motion to support that? I'll make that motion to defer. Thank you, Councillor Armstrong. And Deputy Mayor yep. Wendover is going to second it. All in favor? Thank you, Sarah. I'm sorry I, I put you on the spot. Uh, finance, Donna? Budget. Yes, thank you and through you. So I'm happy today to present the 2022 budget and associated tax rates. So the first slide you will see the assessment summary for 2022. 
Just a reminder, there is no reassessment due to COVID-19 and the increase is only related to growth, which is up 1.02%. So I've outlined all of the assessment values for you there. And uh, the bulk of that sits in the residential class. So 2.7 billion in assessment for 2022. <clears throat> So the next slide just gives you a breakdown of the growth for that 1.02%, 27.5 million, and I have outlined the start of the year and finish of the year 2021 assessment values. And once again, the bulk of that increase comes in the residential and managed uh, and farm managed forest class. <clears throat> so what does that do to the 2022 budget? So with uh, the requirements for 2022 relating to the build of a dedicated mechanic and parks and recreation building. The budget would be 22.1 million, up 7,737,353 from 2021. So the municipal levy is up 0.97%. Uh, $98,772. And just keep in mind the balance of the budget is funded through grants, various fees, user fees, borrowing, and reserves. So, for uh, if you compare $100,000 worth of assessment between 2021 and 2022, there would be a decrease of 27 cents. And the next slide actually shows you the tax rate comparison between those two years with the tax rate going down 0.07%. So the next slide shows the increase for the average homeowner in Trent Lakes, $11.43. That increase, keep in mind, is related to the increase for growth for the three assessment classes, which are the primary classes for Trent Lakes. So the single family detached, single family detached on the water and the seasonal property, seasonal dwellings. And in fact, most rate payers will see a tax decrease with this budget and the decrease in the tax rate. So the next slide I have for you relates to the 2022 COVID pressures that uh, we are facing as part of this budget. So we continue to face uncertain financial impacts from COVID-19 and any future grant assistance. We have increased fire department calls up 40%, materials brought to, to the transfer stations, demand for building and planning services. There is an increase due to the mandatory firefighter certification that's coming down, uh, increase in the volunteer recruitment and the costs in getting those staff up and running, purchasing delays, and we have been finding a lack of bidders on projects, increased costs for PPE, cleaning and equipment, and just continued processes required in the office to adapt to the COVID restrictions as they change. So the next slide I've outlined just some of the cost savings that we, we undertook in this budget. So we continue to try to digitize as much as possible and find efficiencies. We have uh, some purchasing efficiencies for our fire department for res respirators and some joint tendering with the county for surface treat and calcium chloride and training opportunities with the county. We're always open to try to do those as much as possible. The election, we have internet and telephone voting, and we do have some uh, staff changes, which has allowed us some expertise on our road engineering, which is going to be helpful. Some efficiencies for brush and yard grinding and, uh, and compartment cleanup costs, and digital attendance at conferences and courses. We have found some cost savings. In, in attending courses that way. So the next slide relates to the cost for the OPP, a major component of the um, portion of the building and, and other protection budget. So the costs are actually down again for OPP, uh, but it is $228.90 per household. And with the 2020 reconciling, reconciliation amount, $1,642,167 overall for 2022. Uh, the next slide just shows you how the municipal budget is apportioned, which almost, almost half this year being in the capital budget because of that build. 
And the following slide just shows you the portion of where the revenue is being collected, which this year is more in uh, other than taxation, which is unusual. And that is because of reserve use and borrowing for that structure. Uh, so under the capital budget, the other items being looked at this year, there's going to be a resurfacing of Bessie Avenue South and Saunders Road. There's going to be a replacement of the Salmon Lake Culvert. There are uh, some vehicles being replaced as per our asset management plan. And council did approve work at Onang Park. Uh, there was support for 66,000 in the draft budget and council did increase that during our last budget meeting, another 34,000 for $100,000 uh, worth of spending there. And I, the direction given to me at that time was to use reserve funds for that remaining 34,000. But I can let council know that I no longer have to do that. We did see, receive a very generous donation from Jeff and Sheila Cheshire and we'll be using that money to offset that, offset that additional spending at that park. So we're very grateful for that donation for sure. So the next slide just gives you the breakdown of the capital budget, which is largely, largely for facilities, 75.01%. And I have provided, uh, you'll see each department has a breakdown of what items are included in their budget. So. General government has all the financial services and the 2022 election, which is a major undertaking for our corporate services department. We have the administrative and council costs, economic development, human resources, and the medical centers. And for other protection services, um, that budget includes the OPP, any administration and legal fees, bylaw enforcement, building inspections, land use planning, conservation levy, and the septic reinspection pro program. The fire and rescue budget, administration costs and internal financing of the uh, station four, which is only got another two years until that's paid back. So that's good news. All costs associated with the halls and equipment, vehicles, emergency planning and training and occurrences. The Public Works Department uh, look after all of the road maintenance, the vehicles and equipment, administration, uh, environmental services, and snow plowing, sanding, and salting. So hopefully council's all right with me not reading every amount on the slides. <laughs> but I can if you want. So the environmental services is a cost to operate our transfer station sites and uh, that includes the closure monitoring post closure monitoring of the closed landfills recycling administrative costs and haulage and the parks recreation and culture and uh is for the grants which council have already awarded the operating costs for all the halls recreation facilities parks and beaches the library levy and the buckhorn rink and a lot of those costs are offset by rink board advertising revenue so my final couple of slides based on, and as a reminder, this budget is only in relation to what is collected at Trent Lakes, does not include the county or the education portion. I do know that the education, the rate will be staying the same in 2022. So that's that's good news. So the average rate payer would pay that $1,570.29. And I have divvied out what is included of that amount for each department and exact uh, things that are paid for under those budgets. So that is it for me. Well, I think Donna deserves a hand. <laughs> but that's well it. done, Donna. Thank I, you. I appreciate I that. This is a very much a team effort. I have to tell you, it very much is. But I well, appreciate. Well, I know that. you. You pat your team on the back, so we will pat you. Thank you. So you're very welcome. And I think at this time we should uh, we should give Barb a hand as well, because I know for somebody coming into a, a new job, she has certainly uh, taken the what would you call it? She's had a, she's had her um, her hands full, and I think she's handled it with grace, and and I think she deserves our uh, our support. And I think all of the people that have stepped up in here in the last six or eight months have been really exceptional, exceptional new talent. So along with the, the 
people that are already here. I think this is a good team and it's a good time of year to give them a pat. I might even do the same thing for council if they behave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here. Donna, you would like to have, yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, one comment and then I'll make a motion. Um, the comment, this is an awful lot to digest and an awful lot of work yes. that you've just gone through. Um, if I may, could you just put up slide seven for me, um, Madam Clerk? To me, if there's only one message people take away, oh, that's not the one, that's the one, is that the tax rate is actually going down year over year. So if you have made no improvements on your property that triggered a building permit, your taxes will go down. And I think that's a really important point for people to understand is that our financial people uh, have managed to offset any increases with uh, appropriate efficiencies and uh, effectiveness in, in the way that they deliver service. So that's the one key message is the tax rate is going down year over year and congratulations on that. The motion is that we approve the uh, 2022 budget as per, or as presented. Tony, I just want to con uh, care of this, the fact that the, your tax rate might not be down. Your taxes that you pay because maybe the county will be going up. Municipal tax rate oh, is going yeah, down. Our, yeah, as far as, as far as your taxes going We down, don't yeah. control the county. And That's like Donna said, this education is staying the same. Yeah. But in terms but of the what county the municipal. Is going up. That's all I meant. It won't yep. be. Nope. You know, nope. Don't think the tax, tax be down. No. Donna, there was a lot of discussion at the um, at county about two or three weeks ago, I guess, concerning the impact that, uh, in terms of what that's going to do once they do hit us. Some people are scared skinny. I think it should almost balance itself because you should see you should see Lakeshore go up and you should see everybody else come down, but the money required would be the same. So, right. So yeah. thank you and through you. I mean, that is a message out there. Absolutely. That uh, I think there is a push to try to get impact to reassess again, because we are using January 1, 2016 current value assessments at this time. There is a concern that that increased assessment would see large tax increases, <laughs> but the message to that is that the municipality would have to look at that additional revenue and perhaps lower their rate accordingly. So I think that's, you know, it, it's all about the levy requirement and that's why I show that slide. So if the levy requirement goes up substantially, then <coughs> taxes could too, because it's all it's all about that levy requirement. But I think the overall thinking is that's, that assess, reassessment is not considered new growth. The growth that I've provided in this in the slides today is new assessment that's existing assessment <clears throat> that is going to perhaps go up in value but the thinking is that we would have to look at our tax rate and decrease that accordingly based on what we require to operate so donna when the lakeshore property has well all property but lakeshore specifically will have gone up in some cases three times as much the new builds that are out there now that have built for the last year or so are they being assessed at what the current rate would be now? They're still being assessed back. Right. Thank you and through you. It's We are all in the province January 1, 2016. So they would take that value today, but back it up to January 1, 2016. And there's a, a lot of different formulas used mm -hmm. to do that on their end. But that is the date that is currently being used. Wow. So these million dollar homes are still being assessed at say 3,000 or 35,000 or something. So thank you and through you. So um, depending on the supplemental, if you've had a supplemental to pick up assessment, you would see an increase, but it is based on that January 1, 2016 value. Wow. So what it would sell for on the market at that time. Wow. But if you, She's if gonna you, be an awful, an awful shock when she oh, hits. Yeah. <laughs> But, Wait, the, but the cost of building something right now is way more expensive than it was. Yes. You know, the price of material has gone up so much. I can't know how that can be equaled out. That doesn't make sense. Well, I guess if everybody goes up, then everybody goes down. Uh, Peter? Just, just a question on the dedicated facility. Uh, how much are we going to have to borrow? So thank you and through you. Yes. 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 Yes, yeah, so we had looked at initially um, somewhere around 4 million 
based on the use of development charges and um, reserve funds, it's probably around three. But until we actually go to tender and get a better costing, I'll come back to council at that time with the recommendation. Now, does that include the retrofits to the other ones or just the one? So through you, that is just the one at the 49 site. There is work going to start uh, on the other buildings as well, because we do have a schedule for, for replacing those two. Okay, um, just, I, I'd like to ask something. Yep. Is, Don, has, has there been a, a talk about the new, uh, any kind of a new furnace in the Buckhorn Gold Department? So, through you. So, you mean uh, the requirement for a new furnace? Well, that, no, the, the furnace doesn't work. Okay, so maybe. You got one rented. Sure. I so, went up there yesterday, I couldn't want to have it. And it's a rented furnace because the old one's no good. Okay, so perhaps through you, Evan is on the line. He could answer that question. Yeah, I just can't understand why. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Windover. Through you, Mayor Clarkson, to you, Deputy Mayor Windover. Um, so unfortunately, during our routine maintenance in December, um, the company identified that the heat exchanger was cracked. So we had to immediately take that furnace out of service. At that time, we ordered a new uh, furnace. Unfortunately, with the COVID delays, okay. the furnace is somewhere who knows where. Um, but we we did have it ordered. It was supposed to be installed middle of January, and we are now middle of February. And unfortunately, with the current situation we're in, we are not sure. So we've sort of been yes, we are limping along with that furnace. It's not ideal, but um, it that, keeps yeah, the building warm enough that things don't freeze. <laughs> it just never came to our attention that yeah, you know in the work. No, nope. absolutely. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, so now we need a motion, I think. Or... I think I made the motion to approve yep. the 22, uh, 2022 budget as presented. Yep. And, and that's all in favor. And then the second one we need is the Ontario Regulation 34. Oh, you didn't get a second on that. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, did you not second? Oh, I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. And all in favor? So the seconder was uh, Councillor Forenza. Madam Mayor, yep. if I may also make a motion um, to direct staff preparing a letter of thanks uh, to the Chessers for their yep. donation of uh, $40,000. Yeah. How many dollars was it? Sir? How many dollars? $40,000. Uh -huh. And I would imagine he'll likely do Great. all the prep work for, yeah. for you as well. Very good. So, thank you. So, yes. Uh, through you. So my next report as required under Ontario regulations. Sorry, Excuse Jesse. me, Jesse. <laughs> Donna's really excited about, yeah, really annual requirements. Um, I had a motion from Councillor Armstrong to direct staff to prepare the letter of thanks, and I just wasn't sure if we were proceeding with a second and a vote on that. Okay, I'll second that. And all in favor? Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> So yes, Ontario Regulation 28409, there is a requirement on the date of passing the budget to let council know what is not included in the budget. So that includes amounts related to amortization, post-employment benefits and solid waste landfill post-closure expenses. Uh, and I have outlined those amounts for you based on the 2020 values. There is a, a second page to that report with those values on there. So just keeping in mind um, those amounts, amortization, we have a, a good schedule and we replace our assets accordingly. Uh, we aren't required to include the full cost of amortization in the budget. The post-closure expenses, uh, we have a reserve currently. We do budget annually for the monitoring uh, at those facilities. And the post-employment liabilities, we do an actuarial review every four years and amounts are included annually in the budget to account for those costs. So this is just for your information, uh, just to fulfill that annual requirement. Okay, a motion please. Councillor Armstrong, motion second to receive. Thank you. Councillor yeah. Franzen. Seconder, Councillor Franzen. Yes. Yeah. Okay, all in favor. Thank you. That motion has carried. Accounts payable, Donna. Yes, thank you. And through you, just for your information, accounts payable for January 2022. 
motion to recede. Councillor Armstrong. Councillor Branson, all in favor? Motion is carried. Corporate services and statement of remuneration and expenses. Thank you, through you, Mayor Clarkson. This report brings forward the statement of remuneration expenses for the year ending December 31st, 2021, as required by Section 284.1 of the Municipal Act. Thank you. And we need a motion, please. <laughs> motion to receive. All right, Councillor Armstrong. <laughs> Let's leave it up. Councillor Branson. <laughs> All in favor, that motion is carried, thank you. And committee boards and policy review. Thank you through you, Mayor Clarkson. Uh, this report, um, uh, a comprehensive review of the municipality's committee and board policy was undertaken uh, by staff. And this report includes a high level summary of proposed policy changes. Uh, the revised policy is attached to the report for council's consideration. Thank you. Okay, if we can have a motion and then we will have discussion. Motion? Uh, Councillor Franson and a seconder. Councillor Armstrong? I would second discussion. it, although I do have some proposed changes. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know if that can be part of the same motion. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if we can put them on the screen or do you want me to pull up my... Thank you. <laughs> um, I will just say I take no credit. It's Anne upstairs. Sorry. <laughs> okay, no, 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 that's fine. Thank you, Anne. Um, just three small amendments that I think will uh, enable the committees to function a little bit more in a st more streamlined manner and uh, uh, in in the way that they would deal with staff and also. Um, ensure that they have the time and the resources to select the appropriate chair. So do you want me to read? I'll read through. <laughs> so instead of the clerk shall consider the need to replace a member in the event that there's a vacancy, to change that to say the clerk shall, in consultation with the committee chair, consider the need to replace the member. Um, and where it says, uh, this does not preclude the advisory committee from directly asking staff for information and data, uh, would add instead, this does not preclude the advisory committee from directly asking staff for information and data with concurrence of the committee chair. And the last one is, uh, it was reading uh, as presented, each advisory committee shall elect a chair and vice chair at their first meeting and uh, propose that we change that, that each advisory committee shall elect a chair and a vice chair within its first three meetings, uh, typo there, which would allow for the committee to gel and understand who they think would be the most appropriate person to lead the committee for the next four years. I would confer, I would concur with those, uh, with those changes. <coughs> Anybody else? Um, Comment? It's good. So do you want to make a motion with those three? <laughs> yes, so my motion would be to approve the policy with these three changes as uh, presented. And, yes. And I concur with that as the seconder. Okay, all right. So all in favor, the motion is carried. Um, and Ruth, the uh, disposal of municipal assets policy review. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mayor Clarkson, a staff completed a review of the municipality's disposable of municipal assets policy, and this report includes a high-level summary of the proposed policy changes. Uh, the revised policy is attached to the report for council's consideration. Thank you. Now, I have a question with this. Some time ago, I can't even remember how long ago, but some time ago, we asked staff about a report on property that we could uh, dispose of to raise some money to offset some of these capital projects. And I know at the time, staff brought forward uh, a very, very large 
document with all of the properties that the township owns. And I think they went back to the drawing board to actually come back with properties that could be disposed of as opposed to properties that are owned, but not properties that we could dispose of. I think it's time that we looked at that because when we look at borrowing money and you look at the cost of land, I know before we were concerned that that was the right time to get rid of it because land was high, land is even higher. So if we have three or four lots out and about that we could uh, that we could dispose of to help offset some of this borrowed money, um, I my feeling is we should uh, we should look at it. So I'm looking for discussion. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, and through you, I might ask Jesse. I know it's on Jesse's uh, work plan for 2022. Uh, we did definitely undertake that process. Jesse's done a fair amount of work on that. I think there was a discovery that there was some issues with some of the zoning in particular, but Jesse, do you want to speak to that? Yes, please? thank you, through you. Uh, this is um, an outstanding council resolution that is still being worked on to develop a list of potentially saleable properties, um, competing priorities and direction from council has placed this lower on the priority list, um, but it is still there. This is specific to not land, this disposal of municipal assets policy. It is um, more specific to vehicles or other um, equipment. equipment. No, I under I understand that. It's just this brought this other, like, okay, <laughs> where are we with this? It is delayed, but not forgotten. <laughs> okay. So is there a chance that we could hit the real estate market this spring? Uh, through, through you, um, I believe that staff are just identifying properties that may be for sale, but it would still be a council decision on whether or not to sell those properties or not, and whether it would be a value um, or not. Uh, so, well, I, I understand that, but we can't make that decision until we know what they are. I know we sold properties before, I think, to offset Sandy Lake. Um, Beaches. Pardon? The property around Sandy Lake Beach. And yeah. Yeah, we sold property around there too, yeah. offset. Okay. Um, could we, I guess we don't need a motion to direct staff for that because it's already there. Is that correct? Like you say, I, I think the price is going to maybe go down after a little while too. Well, the I price things are now. The it's timing really is high. the timing's right. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, did we? We didn't go as far as getting a motion for this, did we? No. Okay. So we need a motion to accept uh, Anne's asset policy review. Um, Councillor Francis. Yeah. And seconded by Councilor Armstrong. All in favor? Motion is carried. Uh, and council expenses, please. Thank you, through you, Mayor Clarkson. This report brings forward council expenses submitted for the month of January 2022 and the remainder of November and December 2021 for council's consideration and approval. Thank you. Okay, can we have a motion, please? Councillor Franson? Motion to support. And seconded by Deputy Mayor Windover. All in favor? Yes, no? You're not in favor? I always abstain on this. Oh, all right. You don't want to be paid? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we should be in the position of approving our own expenses, uh, just on principle. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tear up her check. <laughs> okay, that motion is carried. Um, ogre delegation requests. Thank you, through you, Mayor Clarkson. This year's Ogre conference has been rescheduled for April 12th to or April 10th to 13th. And staff are looking for direction on which delegations, if any, should be requested. And the deadline to submit delegation requests is Friday, March 11th. Okay, I would like to take a delegation to the Minister of Tourism, and I think Lynn already has the uh, has the uh, request that I sent in before. Thank you. 
Can anybody think of anybody else that we should see? It's been a long time since we've had face to face. Mm -hmm. um, Natural resources uh, on a few issues. Gypsy Moss is still going through. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we should approach them. I don't think they'll do anything for us, but I, I don't think we should let the issue die. Now, Ron, it's you well, and I that are going. Well, I, I'd like to make an always a motion for the next meeting. The fact that because like Sherry did, eh? And uh, they're going to go to the MNR and see what they can do. That one, you just better sell one. She got approved the other day, it was in the Herald, yeah. yeah. But that's to do with the gypsy moth, also. The gypsy moth, yeah. yeah, that's I mean, the gypsy so moth. Maybe, right. maybe we can uh, uh, big that with them. Pardon, maybe we can join them. Well, we can. We, I, I was asking Sherry, we can, but she said, Well, we would have to make it, you know, those motion itself and bring it forward, okay, okay. Okay, so natural resources. So, yeah. So I think maybe I'll make that motion maybe the next meeting. And we might as well do the joint and several liability. Again, they will get tired of us eventually. Yeah, <laughs> I guess my comment was I didn't make that delegation at Roma and the Attorney General actually was there, which was impressive to see her in person. Um, I think they have an action plan um, so yeah, I think for last and several lines. Yes, it is joint and several. Okay. So if we go again, I think it's fine to go again, uh, but we at least need to acknowledge what they responded to us and told us about the action plan. And what did they tell us? Well, they're going to bring together a uh, uh, a group from uh, the insurance bureau, from AMO, and from some select municipalities to really dig into the whole issue of joint and several and insurance increases, et cetera. So that was supposed to happen, I think, in March. So then why don't you write up what you came out of that thinking, and then we will take the same delegation and say, this is what we understand you were going to do. Are you still working on this? Perfect. Yeah. I, I can do that. I think Jesse has some summary notes, but I can expand on that if you'd like. Okay. We'll hit them twice. Okay. Um, you're all right? Uh, just to clarify, I just have that you would request that staff request delegations to the Ministry of Tourism regarding tourism funding, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry regarding gypsy moths, and the Ministry of the Attorney General regarding joint and several liability. So if someone would be, if I've got that correct and someone would be willing to make that motion. Okay. Sure. I'll make that motion that we present delegations to those three ministries at, uh, at OVER. And Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Window is going to second it. All in favor? Motion is carried. Okay, uh, question on the ballot. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Clarkson. Um, through the Municipal Elections Act, Council can submit a question to electors through the Municipal Election Ballot. And I've just prepared a report for Council um, with some information prior to making a decision later on the agenda today. A uh, question on the ballot must concern a matter within the jurisdiction of the municipality of Trent Lakes, not concern a matter that has been prescribed as a matter of provincial interest. Be clear, concise, and neutral. Be capable of answered in the affirmative or negative, and no multiple choice or multi-part questions are permitted. Um, March 1st is the last day for Council to pass a bylaw to put a question on the ballot, and that makes the last day to provide notice being this Friday, February 18th. Uh, with these timelines, both the public meeting and the bylaw consideration will need to be considered at the same meeting. If council does adopt the bylaw, uh, the clerk must also provide notice of passage within 15 days. Uh, within 20 days of that notice, the minister or any other person or entity may appeal to the chief electoral officer of Ontario um, on the grounds that the question does not comply with the legislation. After the bylaw has been passed, it cannot be amended, uh, but it can be repealed on or before nomination day, which in 2022 falls on August 19th. Uh, the results of a question placed on the ballot uh, will be binding if at least 50% of the eligible electors in the municipality vote on the question, and more than 50% of the votes on the question are in favor. And the results will be binding. So if it is a yes, uh, the municipality must do everything in its power to implement the results in a timely manner. Um, if it's a no, the municipality is not permitted to do anything uh, for a period of four years. I included some additional information in my report about past voter turnout 
and questions on the ballot in other municipalities for council's consideration prior to make a, a decision um, on whether to place a question on the ballot or not. Um, and this report is just for council's information. So we're not voting on this today. Uh, through you, Mayor Clarkson, this is just a report uh, providing information on question on the ballot, but uh, Councillor Armstrong's notice of motion will be considered today. Well, I think we should defer that until we have the full council. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, I would have done that, except that we have to submit something February 18th, if we're going to do this at all, and otherwise we lose the option. I don't know that this is the way we want to go, but unless we submit something to have it as a placeholder by this Friday, in which case we can always withdraw it before August 19th, uh, we will not go ahead. So I'm going to leave it on the uh, agenda for today, um, reluctantly. Yes. So I, I just want to be uh, clear that at this time, we're, um, we're not looking for debate on whether or not to include a question on the ballot. Um, this is just an opportunity for council to ask any specific questions about the process or um, any of the legislation around a question on the ballot. How common is it for this type of thing to be used in this in this circumstance? Uh, through you, Mayor Clarkson, uh, from research that staff um, have provided, the 2018 election, we could find that there were six questions on the ballot. Um, but I will note that none of them were about capital projects and in, in our research, we were unable to, to find one. Um, and there was also some data on the 2010 and 2006 elections, um, of which I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I believe there was 10 in 2010 and no, maybe there was, seemed to be around 10 uh, municipalities that asked questions in both 2010 and 2006. Now, when you have to have 50% of the voter turnout to have it considered, and then 50% of those to actually have it um, enforced, what's the point? Other than to stop discussion. Yes. If I may, Madam Mayor, um, you need 50% and then 50% to make it binding. That's not to say that you may or may not get some directional information from the ballot. So, any other questions? Yes. Just a comment. It may assist any future council on that question. So is this something we vote on today? Uh, through you, this is just my report providing information on questions on the ballot in general. Later on today's agenda, we have Councillor Armstrong's notice of motion, which is requesting to put a question on the ballot, and that will be voted on today, later in the meeting. So how are we voting on one today? that hasn't been out there for two weeks. Like whenever I wanted to put a notice of motion through, that notice of motion has to go prior to the next meeting. How are we doing all of that in one meeting? Through you, Mayor Clarkson, the uh, procedure bylaw outlines the timelines for notice of motion. Uh, the, they need to be in the Friday before the agenda is posted. This was included on uh, the agenda posting on Tuesday and has been out for a week and complies with the timeline set out in the procedure bylaw. Okay, and because we don't have a whole council here, we can't defer this. Uh, through you, you would you would need to hold a special meeting in order for it to meet the requirements of the timelines in the Municipal Elections Act. As the last day to pass the bylaw is March 1st and you need 10 days notice to the public prior to doing that. Yes. Uh, we aren't discussing uh, Councillor Armstrong's motion. We're just, uh, we just have the information in front of us. And Jesse, uh, Jesse, I'm wondering, uh, do you need uh, a, a notice of motion to receive, or do we need a motion to receive your report? 
Yeah, uh, my report was just for information purposes. So yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll make the motion to receive uh, Jesse's report. Okay, and a seconder. Yeah. All in favor? Yes. Uh, no, I, I was going to second the vote. Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> All right, so then we move on at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, correspondence for information. Anybody want to speak to any of these? Did anybody read uh, Bruce Averill's Buckhorn Rank in the BCC Council grant uh, meeting clarification? I would suggest that that's a very good uh, reading because it points out three different instances that just the information that everybody is saying we need to get have already been asked for. And the dates and, and, and everything else are in that report. So I would suggest that that letter be, uh, be read because it certainly contradicts the misunderstandings that have been uh, circulated around this table. Uh, can we have a motion to accept this uh, uh, correspondence for information? Motion yes. to receive all the correspondence for information. Yeah. Thank you. Second. Second. And all in favor? Did you have a comment? No, no problem. Correspondence for action, addressing the revolving door of justice accountability. We've been around this table before. Uh, motion, please. Motion. I would make a motion to support this. Okay, and I will second that. All in favor? Motion is carried. Excuse me, I thought we dealt with this at our last meeting. Yeah, with yeah. We don't. We deal with it every now and again. No, but I mean, why would we be resupporting the motions we've already supported? I guess somebody just puts it back in the back in the wash machine. Community care Buckhorn Buckhorn Office Community Grant application. They came in late, and I think this is a motion to uh, to recognize the fact that they are uh, worthy of our. Uh, of our donation, and I think we have money in our slush fund to cover it. So we can have a motion, please. Councilor Armstrong? Yeah, I would make a motion to use the remaining $3,000 uh, in our community grants budget uh, to support this request. It's unfortunate they've missed the deadline. They've done it two years in a row. Um, and I would suggest we will only do that. <laughs> can't happen again, I guess would be the mm -hmm. message. But since we do have $3,000 remaining on, and, we, and it is a valued uh, partner and organization, then I would, I would support awarding them the $3,000 that's left in the budget. And I think without there being an excuse, an excuse, the excuse is having babies because they keep switching people. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Motion is carried. Uh, let's get that one. Explore Buckhorn advertising request. Yes. A motion to support the three hundred and eighty dollars. Okay, and a seconder. Uh, Deputy Mayor Windower, all in favor? Motion is carried. Bylaws uh, adoption of the twenty twenty two budget. Yeah. Motion to adopt. Thank you. Councillor Armstrong, seconder, Deputy Mayor Windover. Adopt of the 20, uh, 2022 tax rates, yes. Uh, through you, you just missed the calling of the vote. Uh, all in favor? Gotcha. Adoption of the 2022 tax rates motion, please. Councillor Franzen, Deputy Mayor Windover, all in favor? Motion is carried. Okay, this is my notice of motion. I'm going to read it and then turn it over to you, Ron. Um, whereas the pandemic has prevented me from using my $3,000 to have a volunteer dinner, and whereas the Buckhorn Public School is trying to raise money to replace their play structure, I now, therefore, the council approve transferring the balance of the $3,000 to the Buckhorn Public School fundraising campaign. Now, just to clarify this, uh, Gortha Pine Ridge is one of the few um, um, what do you call them? 
education. education that does not support playgrounds. They don't even support the uh, the maintaining of them. Ron, would you like to take this, please? Yes. Uh, through you, there's no need to physically remove okay. or physically move chairs, uh, but Deputy Mayor Wendover, you are now on the chair. Yeah. Okay. Then. So, uh, you want to support this? Pardon? You you're doing this motion, out, right? Yes. Yeah. Then for. Um, Last year, I think I gave it to community yeah. care. Can I make a motion? Sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll make a motion. Through you, Deputy Mayor Windover, uh, Mayor Clarkson has removed herself from the chair in order to make the motion. She has made the motion. Oh, no. So I'll uh, second it then. Was it second? Did anyone second it? Uh, no. No. Well, I'll second the motion then. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, do it. Hey, Johnny. Peter, did you want to ask a question? Yeah, I, I do. Um, uh, first of all, the, the wording in here, it should be uh, money allotted to the mayor for the, the volunteer lunch. It shouldn't, it shouldn't state uh, prevented me from using my $3,000. It's municipal's, municipalities $3,000. So it, it was allotted to the mayor for that particular purpose. No, it wasn't. That's what it was used for back then, but it oh. was at my discretion to use it however I saw fit. It's not, it is not specific to something. It's my discretion. And I chose to do that. Go ahead. If I might add to that, I'm sorry, I know this sounds harsh, but um, it's taxpayer money. And it was budgeted for the mayor. You're absolutely right to use at your discretion to help you carry out your duties. But it's not your $3,000, it's taxpayer money. Yes. I would uh, prefer if we if we could recognize the volunteers in another way and possibly give them the $25 gift certificate. Yeah, but I That would them. kind of equal the cost of lunch and uh, that would show the appreciation that we have for our volunteers coming out of COVID. But there's another 3,000 this year. That's an annual discretionary budget that's been given to the mayor. Like I didn't get any arguments last year on giving it to community care. Yes. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, and through you, I'm, I'm not in support of this. And the reason I'm not is that we had a full council meeting to consider all of the requests. And there were about 12, I think for community grants, one of which was the Buckhorn Playground. We had full discussion, uh, council as a whole made a decision about how much to allocate. And to me, it, doing this makes a bit of a mockery of that process. And if I were another recipient, I would question the integrity of that process. If we can go back after the fact and top up one of the particular uh, applicants. So I, I really don't think this is appropriate to do this outside of that granting process. Well, exactly where would you think that $3,000 could be spent? Well, I think Peter had a one suggestion, um, or it goes to reserves. That was to give you know, a $25 grant, a uh, gift certificate? That's just a suggestion. We have a motion on the floor. Yeah. And I'd, uh, I'd uh, request a recorded vote. Donna, did um, did three thousand dollars go in the budget this year too? Through you, yes, it did. So right now, there's in the mayor's budget, there's six thousand dollars. So through you, that's not how it works. So 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> so the three thousand dollars unspent last year, like all of the other unspent monies, will go into a reserve. I bring a resolution to council in order to transfer any unspent funds into reserve. So it will go into the general government reserve, but it's an overall picture of general government. So if there's overspending elsewhere, you know, it depends on the balance left over. So yes, it would be from reserves if council were to direct to um, keep those monies from 2021. And why did we not have to go through this process with this same council last year to direct that same $3,000 to community care? So through you, there was a there was a request of council that went to council to support it. And they supported it. At that time, they did support it, yes. So what's different? I can, I can tell you what's different for me is first of all, millions of dollars get spent uh, are sent from our rate payers to the public school to the schooling system and they don't nearly use we spend more money than it costs to educate our children and i don't see the point of uh, the taxpayers being taxed again by giving the school a donation for a parkland or for a park playground playground so then you don't see any problems with giving community care money where that's a federal and provincially funded health care service. Is that not the same double dip? Not in my mind. Okay. As I say, Kawartha Pine Ridge is the only school district that does not maintain playgrounds. They inspected the playground, determined it was too old, tore it down, and left a junior school with no playground. And you're telling me that that is a waste of our funds? I didn't say it was a waste of our funds. Are we viewed to have deeper pockets than the, the school board? Uh, there is also a trustee. If people have problems the way the Fourth of Pine Ridge is being run, they can contact their trustee or run against their trustee. And you're going to have some success there, I assume. Anyway, obviously, this has been, uh, well, we have to go, we have to have a vote. Can we wait until, can this get deferred until we have a full council? I'm Jesse? going to ask our clerk that yeah. question. <laughs> you, there's a motion on the floor, but if you'd like to withdraw it, um, as long as there's no objections, you can ask to defer this to the next meeting. Okay, that's what I'm going to do unless there's objections, and I can imagine there is. Okay, so yeah. Okay. No. Okay. Through you, Deputy Mayor Windover, there's a motion on the floor from uh, Councillor, or from Mayor Clarkson to defer to the next meeting. So we okay. just follow the normal. So, I'll second that motion, and all in favor? Carry. Okay. Now, Councillor Armstrong, you're going to introduce your motion. I am. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, preface, if I may, it's this is not something I would be bringing forward other than the fact that we have a provincial deadline uh, facing us. Uh, and so if we don't bring this forward now, we won't have the option for putting a ballot, or a question on the ballot. So um, I'll read it. Uh, and then we can comment. Where, so again, this is just to put a placeholder there. If we want to have a public uh, question, we have the option of withdrawing it before August 19th. So where has the municipality engaged a consultant to assess viable options for a sustainable skating surface and sports pad at the current Buckhorn Sports Pad location? And where has the consultant identified three recommended options with lifetime cost estimates? And whereas council has directed further staff work for one of the options, outdoor artificial ice, permanent ice surface for the existing ring size, to identify any further issues that would need to be addressed to move forward. 
and whereas staff has been directed to prepare a public consultation process for the issue, and whereas a question on the ballot is one option uh, to be considered for public consultation, and whereas the Municipal Elections Act provides a bylaw to submit a question to the electors shall be passed on or before March 1st in the year of a regular election, and whereas the last day to provide notice before passing a bylaw to submit a question to the electors is February 18th, this Friday, and the clerk needs to give 10 days notice of the attention to pass the bylaw to the public and the minister and hold at least one public meeting to consider the matter. Therefore, the council direct the clerk <coughs> to give notice and arrange a public meeting to consider placing the following on the 2022 municipal election ballot. And the question, which has been reviewed with our, our, our lawyer, et cetera, and gone through several iterations uh, is, are you in favor of the municipality using tax revenues to fund the infrastructure necessary to refrigerate the existing size of foreign sports pad with an estimated base cost of a minimum $915,000 and the operating costs, an estimated minimum annual cost of 141,000 for the purpose of extending the ICs season to a reliable three months. Uh, so that's the question. And then further, the council direct the clerk to prepare the appropriate bylaw. And then the council schedule a special meeting of the council on Tuesday, March 1st, in order to hold the, the required public meeting. And that should council pass the bylaw to submit the question to the electors, that while this bylaw is in effect, this would supersede and render unnecessary other public consultation message methods. Sorry. Flip side of that is should the bylaw be withdrawn and we agree not to move forward uh, with the question on the ballot, then we would need staff to look at some other public consultation options. It's a mouthful. <laughs> Sorry. Comment. I'll second that motion. So all in favor? No, not, no, I'm I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Sorry. I'm back. <laughs> now, can this get deferred? You said no, it can't be deferred yeah. because there's nine back. Only if we had another special meeting Wednesday or Thursday. We need a special, yes. Uh, perhaps I could help clarify as well. Um, passing this notice of motion today does not immediately put the question on the ballot. Um, there would be the public meeting, and at that public meeting, there would be a consideration of a bylaw. The passing of that bylaw puts the question on the ballot. So um, a decision today does not mean that a question will be on the ballot. It's the passing of the bylaw at the March 1st meeting that would put the question on the ballot, if that helps. Oh. Well, it uh, it helps. This is. Um... I have to under I have to try to rational rationalize why a person would do this. We will not get 50%. We never have had 50%. And if we did, the chances of getting 50% of them to agree on anything is is just impossible. It just would not happen. So basically, we're putting something in motion with this with the the um the only reason being to shut all discussion down about the rink until after the next election. There can be no other reason for this. I there's to that. there's I'm facts sorry. and there's facts and figures in that that are not proven. There's a disclaimer right on that thing that those they're strictly um, uh, estimates because you've got to get engineering, you've got to get all kinds of things to be able to to quote figures. So. There, I'm wondering why. Why would a person want to to tie up the kind of time that it's going to tie up? If something were to happen and this thing were to pass, staff would be obligated right then and there to get into the build of this facility. There'd be no standing around waiting to see what's going to happen. Like we've got your motion right now is to is to get the community center and get. Um, well, mainly the community center to determine what it's going to do one way or the other. And the idea was if they come back, whatever they come back with, 
and we're waiting for, for uh, Barb's um, report. She was given that job. It's been sitting on her desk now for about three weeks until she's got time to deal with it. When she comes back, some of the questions are going to be asked that, that need to go to people. So why are we all of a sudden finding that it's so important to jump the queue, leave the community center behind, leave Barb's report behind, and enter something that will stop all further discussion on the rink until the election? If it isn't, to stack the deal. Yes. I believe I have the right to respond to that under I think you procedures. Um, first of all, I resent attributing to myself any particular motive for putting this forward. I think that is inappropriate, unfair, and unfounded. Um, secondly, this is not going to shut down any of those two things that are in place. I've spoken with the DCC, I've spoken with the PRCAC. They both understand that we still want them to come forward with the information we have requested. We've also allowed for Barb to continue her work and come forward with that information. Both of those pieces of information are critical. And if they and once we have that information, it may determine that it's completely inappropriate to have a question on the ballot. Um, so again, all I'm trying to do with this is get a placeholder in there so that if it makes sense, as we learn more and get more information, if it makes sense to have a question on the bylaw or on the ballot, we can. But if we don't allow for that placeholder today, then that will simply not be one of our options. And I think we should keep our options open. I would, I would say that we should keep our options open. Time and time again, you are the first person or other people around this table have said, you're working behind the scenes, you're working behind the scenes. Then it turns around and you say, you've been in consultation with the BCC. You've been in consultation with whatever. If I get in consultation with these people, I'm working behind the scenes. Why is your ability to work behind the scenes and gather this information any more important than mine? If I may respond, if I've not been in any consultations or negotiations, I provided a heads up to the BCC that this notice of motion was coming forward so that they knew the intent was not to preempt their response to us and that we were still looking for that. That was it. I thought it was a courtesy to one of our partners to let them know that this was coming up and why. And the same thing with the PRCC. Period. But was it two weeks ago or three weeks ago? Your notice of motion then was to contact and work with the BCC. Like you can't, you can't play it both ways. You can't play it both ways. Anyway, if this comes up, or can come up again in two weeks, we need to let this go forward now. I find that this is a very, um, I don't even know, I don't even know how to explain it. I can't for the life of me understand why we can't let a project take its natural, um, it's going, it's going to come to a, it's going to come to a boil sooner than later. I don't know why all these other little games have to be played in between, because to me, it's a game. Like if you look at all of the information that Jesse has, has garnered, this is not in any way, shape or form uh, commonly done. There's no urgency for this. This is not going to be decided by uh, some notice on the ballot. It's going to be decided if there's a if there's a spot, if there's a will, and if there's the money. Anyway, um, I'm going to call for the going to call for the vote. I, I just want to make one comment. We still do have our meetings at, or our public meetings at the community centers, so it's the public consultation that I think is very important. Once this motion goes out, and I'm speaking because I've had people phone me, once this motion goes out, the assumption out there is this shuts all dialogue down, that we might as well go sucker thumbs and go to the and go to the back room. That this, that this, the intent of this is to stop all discussion till the end of this council. And that's the that is the perception that's in the public. And why wouldn't you? Because it's a perception that I got out of it. Why wouldn't you see it that way? 
Like we've had, we've had how many public consultations? We've had um, numerous um, uh, surveys done. All the stuff that's talked about in here, this has been done. This now comes down to council making a decision. Yeah. We have known for a year, long before that last survey was asked for, we knew three questions. Is there parking? Is there septic? Is there water? All three things. None of those three things have been added by all of these people that we've hired to give us the information. So now we're gonna go with a notice of motion talking about what this information is and none of these people have addressed the question that's been asked of them. I will get sidetracked because Mary, you are sidetracked. Um, when, when we look at the surveys, the number one issue that people had for recreation was trails. And we have not pushed trails, not nearly as hard as we pushed for this race. Peter, trails are out there. They need to be more developed, but there's trails there. This is built infrastructure. This is the same as the roads depots. It's a failing piece of infrastructure. It's no different than the Galway Hall, the Lakehurst Hall, the Cavendish Hall. It's no different than the fire halls. It's a piece of infrastructure that's owned by the municipality that's failing. So it's not a trail out in the woods somewhere. It's something that we own. So I think we've discussed it. Carol, have another go at it. No, I'd just like to make one comment and then I think we've exhausted the number of times yep. each member can talk about this issue. Um, but which is to say that a, a facility is failing only if you define what its mandate is. And the mandate for the rink originally was to provide a free accessible rink outdoor rink for our residents to use and if that's the definition it's certainly not failing if the mandate was to provide a reliable ice surface for three months during the year um, which it never was then of course it's failing so i think it's a bit flawed to say that it's a failing piece of infrastructure you should try to put ice on it okay uh i'm going to call for the vote uh, I, I'd like to record the vote. Are we ready for the vote? Mm -hmm. Councillor Franzen, are you in favor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Windover? No. Councillor Armstrong? Yes. Mayor Clarkson? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, what happens there? That motion has failed. Okay. So, um, liaison reports for external boards. Do we have any comments? Any other information items? Uh, just one comment. Uh, I, I was certainly glad to see the correspondence from the, the Galway Hall. I, it would be nice to get uh, reports from all of our community centers to know what's going on. Uh, we seem to be in a vacuum on uh, what the future plans and what the present plans are for our community centers. Well, I think that's I think that's a fair comment, but I think they've also had their hands tied for two years. So other than checking to see if the heat's on, which basically Dylan does now, they haven't been able to do very much uh, but it would still like to, i I'd, I'd like to see the reports from the meetings the minutes from the meetings are they still even having men of meetings mm -hmm. some of them are i guess yeah, um, yes. maybe what we should go back to is making sure that whoever is the representative on the on the uh the community centers attend the meetings mm -hmm and bring a report back. I always found that to be really, really valuable. Yeah, yep. We have many meetings. Pardon? We have many meetings. No, well, I guess they have had. Like Lake Hurst has. No. Okay, um, but I, I agree, Peter, we need to get, uh, yeah. we, need to, we need to hear what they're up to. 
Uh, council is going into a closed meeting to discuss advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. Anyone that is listening or viewing the electronic meeting may remain online for when council rises from closed session. We need a motion. Captain Mayor Wendover, Councillor Armstrong, all in favor? Action is carried. Uh, any Can we uh, have a motion to rise from close, please? Deputy Mayor Wendover, Councilor Branson, all in favor? Motion has carried. Now we need the confirming bylaw. Motion, please. Yes. Through you, the next item is business arising from the closed meeting, which is the minutes from February 2nd. Okay, so we have a motion to. I put on my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be Deputy Mayor Wendover and Councilor Branson. <laughs> all in favor? Now, what can I do? Confirming bylaw. Do we have the confirming bylaw now? Councillor Armstrong, Councillor Franzen, Councillor Deputy. Mark, Mark, Mark. Just... Motion to adjourn. Oh. Sorry, I'll need to call for the vote. To... Call for the vote. To... All in favor? <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Everyone, yes. Good job. Yep. Thank you. Sorry, Ron, we just have to move for a seconder. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ron, Carol, like, we can just Peter. come here. Yeah. Whichever We're there. one you want. Thank you. Sorry, I don't need I to call for the vote. All in favor? All done.